want to welcome you this, uh, this evening to Tri-State Baptist Temple, and uh, we're excited about the chance to be together, and we want to invite you to take your hymn book and turn to hymn number 289, hymn 289, and we want to stand together as we open our service and sing, Come Unto Me, 289. <coughs> so much, Lord, that you sent your son to die on the cross for us, Lord. And, and Lord, even though we're undeserving, Lord, of your love and, and what you've done for us, Lord, we are grateful and thankful, Lord. And Lord, we just pray that you would uh, bless this time of singing now, Lord. Uh, Lord. 
Lord, we just pray that you would uh, be with us in tonight's service, Lord. Uh, we pray that you would just lift up Pastor, Lord, use him in a way that only you can, Lord. Lord, we just pray and ask, Lord, if there's someone here tonight, Lord, that uh, doesn't know you as their personal Savior, Lord, we pray that they would uh, realize their need, Lord, for a Savior before it's eternally too late, Lord. Lord, we just uh, want to give you all the praise, honor, and glory for all that we do, Lord. <coughs> Love you, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You can be seated and we'll listen to our choir. <coughs>
bulletin that we began the service with. If you have a bulletin there, uh, the words are in the bulletin. But if not, you'll be able to catch on quickly if you're still learning it. And I'll help you with, with each verse. We want to sing this together. Lord, be glorified. thankful that you're here and that is our prayer today that our Lord will be glorified in every area of our life in our church and uh, so we want to keep singing that as a prayer uh, to the Lord but we're glad you're here we want to remind you about some of the things that are going on in the life of our church uh, we are I, I, I neglected to mention this morning that tomorrow there is a ladies Bible fellowship at at 6 30 6 o'clock 6 I got it. 6 6 o'clock, there's a Ladies Bible Fellowship at 6 o'clock tomorrow. So I want to encourage our ladies to come and be a part of the Ladies Bible Fellowship. And you'll have a good time with that. We encourage you to come. Uh, on Sunday, March the 1st, a couple Sundays away, we're going to have a special uh, breakfast uh, during the 9.30 hour. Uh, and we're doing that as a way to just uh, uh, keep in mind uh, our uh, project to, to get chairs for our platform. And uh, we're thankful that we were able to get all this carpet and get the platform remodeled and get the new carpet up here and all those kind of things. And so now we want to get our chairs up here. Uh, we've already received enough uh, gifts, offerings for about half of those chairs. And so uh, we're going to have that special breakfast on March the 1st. And Brandon Nelson is providing all of the meat, all the food for that. He's going to cook and uh I think he needs to recruit some helpers to help him to cook uh, that breakfast, and then uh, we'll come and enjoy that time together, and just, uh, uh, if you can, to give a special offering toward uh, those chairs. We just want to finish out that project and, and get uh, the chairs up here for our flyer and uh, to finish out uh, our, uh, our platform, and so we're looking forward to that. So don't forget about that, and if you know uh, the things that Brandon brings and has, uh, you know it would be a great breakfast. He always has uh, just the best quality uh, uh, products that we get to, to enjoy. So we want to, we're looking forward to that. And then uh, don't forget that we have now on our schedule uh, a service on a Friday, March the 6th, uh, where Dr. Myron Geiler and the Marietta Bible College Choir will be here. And we're looking forward to that, uh, that service. And uh, every year we have the privilege to have uh, the choir and Dr. Geiler at some point during the spring. And so we're excited to get to do that again. And so we want to encourage you to make special plans for that. It's a, 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 not a normal night for service. So you have to make special plans. We hope you'll come and be a part of that. Bring somebody uh, to be a part of that service as well. And uh, it'll be a blessing to them. And again, if you've never heard this choir, they are unique. And uh, they're a great blessing. And we want to encourage you to come and be a part uh, of that service. And we're looking forward to that. And then several uh, of, of you have signed up to help us uh, with our new Welcome and Resource Center that we have are beginning out in this wing, and Pastor has gotten a lot of that set up and ready for us. And so next Sunday, uh, after uh, the morning service, he's going to meet with anybody who has signed up to, to be a host uh, uh, for a Sunday uh, at the Welcome Center and uh, give you some information about all that that will entail and, and what that will be about. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. One of the things
things we're going to do next week is sh uh, introduce our new online giving. And uh, uh, there will be a place at the Resource Center where you can do that, and as well as a place on our website. And uh, there will be an app that you can download, so you can do it at any time. Uh, and that's something we've never done before, and we're going to do to, uh, something that will be help more, maybe more convenient to, to give. And, and uh, I don't know if you're like me. Uh, well, people, anybody my age, we don't carry cash, right? And uh, I have a checkbook solely to write checks to the church. It's the only thing I use my checkbook for. And so, uh, so it's something that's going to be you can use. It's something you don't have to use. If you're not interested in it, that's no problem. You can continue to give like you always do. But we're going to talk all about that next week. We shared it with you on Vision Night. And so next uh, Sunday, we'll, we'll show you a little bit about it, and it'll be ready to go. And so uh, we'll let you know about all that as well. So uh, we're looking forward to all these things. Uh, in March, we'll have a new Building with the Bible Hour class, or rather two new classes with the Building with the Bible Hour. We want to encourage you to sign up for one of those and be a part of those during the 930 hour each Sunday. Of course, the first Sunday uh, of March is going to be that special breakfast that we're going to have. Then the following week, we'll start the two new classes Pastor Tim is teaching a class on using your spiritual life journal, and uh, he's uh, created that resource for us last year, and they re reintroduced it again this year during our uh, our vision we a vision month and our vision night, and uh, just a, a just a tool just to, to help you practically get into God's Word, uh, study God's Word, uh, uh, do daily devotions, memorize uh, Scripture, uh, just a lot of helps for the Christian life, and it's a great tool. And if you would like. Uh, if you don't have one of those and you would like one, uh, let us know as soon as you can, and we'll uh, prepare one for you. I've got, uh, I think, 20 that we produced this year, uh, new people that wanted one that didn't have one last year. If you have one last year and you just need some updated information, uh, that's going to all be available at the Resource Center as well uh, in the coming days. And so uh, we want to encourage you uh, to get one of those. But this class, Pastor Tim is teaching, and just want to help you understand what all those pieces are and help you to just utilize them uh, so that you can grow in your Christian life. Uh, uh, I'm sure uh, one of the classes will just be about uh, how to study your Bible at home and, and those resources in, the, in that journal about studying, uh, doing personal devotions and uh, there's sections for your prayer lists and those kind of things. There are sections for taking notes and all those kind of things, and, and uh, they're, they're valuable things. You might look at it and think, well, I'm, I don't necessarily need this, but I want that, and that's fine. Uh, some people uh, 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 don't use all those lists, and some people use more than are in the book. And so uh, it's just a tool to help you uh, to grow in your faith. And so uh, take that class with Pastor Tim, and he'll help you use that journal and it'll be, get the most uh, – get the most value out of it. And then the other class that I'll be teaching is about developing God's heart for souls. And so that'll be a great class as well. I'm looking forward to those. So be a part of one of them and be here during the Building with the Bible Hour. If you want to rise up and build in your life as we've been, uh, uh, has been our theme for this year, uh, uh, consistent time in God's Word is going to be vital, going to be key. And being faithful to the services uh, will be a big part of that. So we're thankful uh, that we have those privileges. Well, at this time, we'll ask our ushers to come so we can take up our tithes, offerings, and, and missions offering again this evening. Amen. <laughs> All right, let's pray together. Amen.
Sunday nights, we always take a moment in our evening service just to, uh, uh, to think about, remind ourselves about one of our most important ministries we have here at our church every summer. That's our summer camp. Uh, we take the first full week of June, and uh, we reserve uh, a camp here. It's Camp Asbury Wood. It's uh, just about 40 minutes from here out uh, behind Huntington. Great camp facility out there. We rent the whole place for the whole week. And uh, we wind up normally taking somewhere between 60 to 100 boys and girls from the community to camp. We leave on Monday, come back on a Friday, and uh, our church family staff that camp. They go out and do all the cooking for the whole camp, and our folks stay with our boys and girls and their team leaders and just everything uh, that they can be to those children. And it's a life-changing uh, uh, week for many of the children. Many are uh, saved, trust the Lord during that week. And uh, many people have made uh, just decisions that sets the course for their life as they grow. And so it's one of our most important ministries. It is a, it is a big investment. And uh, we uh, encourage you, just by taking a moment on Sunday night, to be sure you're praying about it, uh, you're thinking about it, uh, you're considering going to camp and spending that week and investing it in the lives of those children, as well as putting something aside at home for camp. Uh, so that when we do come down to camp time, uh, we all have something we can bring in and uh, we can take care of that expense and get that taken care of. But Sunday nights, we receive a change offering, and we encourage folks, if you have any change in your pocket uh, or in the bottom of your pocketbook, the ladies, uh, you get that out, and we keep it in this big piggy bank up here, and we change that out a couple times a year. It all goes back for our camp. And uh, we always encourage families to be in church on, uh, on a Sunday evening. And uh, I believe that God will bless families who have their children in church on Sunday night. And uh, so, uh, so we use our boys and girls that are preschool or elementary school age to help us receive that offering because they just do it better than anybody else. So uh, any of our children that are here, preschool, elementary school age boys and girls, and you want to help us take up the offering, you come right ahead and help us. And uh, you, uh, you can come right here, and uh, Jason's got an official change offering taking up in cup, and uh, we're going to get those, and we're going to pray together, and then we'll get you boys and girls to help us out, all right? Okay, well, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for being good to us, and we do thank you for summer camp, and Lord, so many of us have uh, memories of how you've worked in our life at camp. And Lord, we know that for families and adults who choose to go, that Lord, uh, they always leave, uh, Lord, thankful uh, that they invested that time. And uh, Lord, we often are the greatest blessed people uh, because we were able to go and serve. So, uh, so work in the lives of families and folks uh, and give them a desire and a burden to go and be a part of camp and experience that. And then, Lord, just provide the funds and the things necessary to give us a great week. Help us to reach out to boys and girls in our community. And uh, many, Lord, of the children that go uh, are maybe going to be boys and girls who uh, that might be the only week away, the only thing they get to do all summer. And uh, so it's a big week for them. And so let's, uh, Lord, help us to keep it that way. Make it a big event here. And uh, let's pray about it. And, Lord, let's... Uh, help us to be putting back and providing for it uh, so that we'll be ready when it's here. So bless the night. We pray the offering in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, if you do have some offering you want to give, just hold your hand up. Keep it up there, and these boys and girls are going to come by and pick it up for you.
thank you, boys and girls. Appreciate the help. Uh, you do such a good job with that, and I'm thankful for you being here tonight. And uh, we always look forward to camp together, and that uh, we have a really good time. We're glad that you're able to go, and we hope you'll be able to go this year as well. Uh, but we do want to say hello and good evening to everyone. Appreciate folks who are here, and if you're visiting, we just want you to know how honored we are you're here. It's been just a good day uh, here at church, and uh, we're thankful for a good day uh, that the Lord has given us. And uh, don't forget to pray for folks. We still have people who are trying to work their way through sicknesses and illnesses and uh, the flu, and some people have this kind and that kind and, and uh, all the different kinds, and so it's a tough time of year. And uh, we're just praying people through it and praying people don't get it and people stay healthy so we can just go ahead and do what the Lord would have us to do and get the things done we need to. But we're glad you're healthy and able to be here tonight. Pray and remember those who aren't able to be here and they'll be able to be back with us just very soon. Appreciated meeting with the folks who uh, help clean our church campus and uh, they do a fine job and it's a big job. It's a job that we don't really think about. You know, sometimes we maybe just don't really consider how everything gets done, but we have faithful families in our church who take turns about just taking care of everything and being sure everything looks its very best. I appreciate him doing that. And then Evan mentioned we'll meet with some of you who signed up to host our new Welcome and Resource Center. And uh, if you're interested in doing that, you can still be involved in that ministry. I think the sign-up sheet is still up here on the front pew. And uh, you can just jot your name on there, and uh, we'll begin to meet about that just briefly next week, and we'll get a schedule together of when you serve, and we'll be sure you understand everything that's going on back there so you can just be a blessing, be a, uh, an encouragement, and a smiling, helpful face uh, when visitors come to church. And, uh, and, and for even uh, our people, our family, uh, there'll be many things there that you can help them with, and so we look forward to that as well. But we're glad that you're here uh, on a Sunday evening. We had a great uh, King's Court day yesterday. Uh, King's Court is our youth uh, basketball program. We've been doing it for about 12 years. We have nearly 100 children who are participating in that program this year. And uh, we start at four years old. We go all the way through the sixth grade. And uh, we start Saturday mornings at 9 o'clock with ball games. And we play, I think the last one starts sometime around I don't know, 12, 15, 1 o'clock, something like that. And you know, we finish up and get out of here about 3. Uh, but uh, throughout the course of the day, we're able to share the gospel at every halftime. We step up there and share the gospel with everyone in the attendance. And, uh, and it's a privilege to be able to do that and uh, uh, be able to speak to people about the Lord. And uh, so we're thankful for our people who are helping us in that ministry. Don't forget, there will be basketball practices this week, I believe, uh, Monday and Tuesday nights. And so it's a good opportunity now for you uh, to begin to not only uh, just teach the game of basketball, but there'll be devotions at uh, the midpoint of every practice. And uh, you'll get to share the gospel with those boys and girls. And uh, we're thankful for that ministry and uh, thankful for you who help us with that. Well, I hope you'll take your Bible tonight and open it with us to the New Testament book of Hebrews. Hebrews. Hebrews is an interesting book in the New Testament. <clears throat> it is a book that's filled with very important doctrines. Uh, most Old Testament books have a New Testament counterpart and vice versa. For instance, if you study the Old Testament and you read through the book of Daniel you're going to find a lot of the things that you read about there you'll find in the book of Hebrews. Uh, they have a connection. And uh, so Hebrews is an important book. We're not sure exactly who the penman was. We know who the author is. That's the Lord, isn't it? All the Bibles inspired of God. Uh, we know that the Apostle Paul was given 13 books in the New Testament to pen down for us. I personally believe this is probably Paul that was the penman of this book because it was and is directed to the Hebrews. And we know Paul said, I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews. And so uh, it fits the style and the text uh, fits the subject matter. Uh, but whoever uh, penned it down, we know that these truths came from the heart of God for our life. And so it's an important book. It's a, it's a great book to read. It's not necessarily the easiest book in the New Testament to read. There's, uh, you start to begin to get into some things here that are... Uh, are not uh, just uh, 
uh, uh, kindergarten things. There's some things here that are very important doctrines uh, in God's Word. I want to read to you a portion from chapter 8, and uh, tonight, just for a few moments, I want to just share some thoughts with you here this evening on rising up and building by boldly coming to the Lord. Uh, boldly coming to the Lord. We, we're, we're striving together this year to rise up and to build. We want to build our relationships with the Lord Jesus Christ as individuals. Uh, it's a time maybe for some of us to rise up and begin to become serious about our spiritual life. It's one thing to know that we're born again and have a home in heaven. It's a whole other thing to know that we are actively pursuing God in our daily lives. And so maybe for some of us, it's the time to do that. Uh, but either way, we want to rise up. We want to build together. Uh, we spoke about that on vision night uh, as we shared uh, some of the, the vision the Lord has laid on our heart for the future. Not only is there building physically and materially and ministries that we spoke about, but most importantly is we want to build our hearts and lives, our homes spiritually, and strengthen our lives spiritually. And when we do that as families and individuals, it strengthens our church as a whole so that we're more able, more fitted uh, to serve the Lord and to further the gospel and the work of God. So uh, we want to rise up and build. We, we cannot build spiritually without the right materials. And uh, the right materials to build our lives spiritually are found in God's Word by the Holy Spirit. And uh, so we are looking at the Word of God tonight. Hebrews chapter 8, I'll begin in verse 1. I want to read a, a good portion of this, and it's not the most familiar scripture probably that you, that you read. But uh, notice with me as I begin in, uh, in Hebrews 8 and uh, verse number 1. The Bible said, Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth... He should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve under the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For, see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. But now he hath obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also, he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah." not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people." And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. In that he saith, a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Now, if you mark your Bibles, and that's a good thing to do that, I would mark that phrase in verse number 13, a new covenant, a new covenant. And we'll talk about that as we think about this thought of rising up to build by boldly coming to the Lord. Uh, Lord, we thank you for a good evening. Thank you for allowing us to be here. And uh, God, there's so many other circumstances and situations of life we could find ourselves in tonight. And 
God, there are so many that are facing trials and challenges and difficulties. And God, for those that do not know the Lord, we, we, God, lift them up before you that, God, through these things, they might come to see you and uh, know you as a personal Savior. And Lord, for many who do know you that are going through these things, God, may they not forget who you are. And God, may they not forget what you've done and what you will do. And that, God, they have a mediator. They have a great high priest that they can boldly come to, uh, Lord, to find help in time of need. And Lord, we pray tonight that for each and every one of us that are here this evening, you'd bless every heart. Speak to us, God, right uh, where we need to be spoken to. Tell us the things we need to hear. And Lord, we pray that, uh, God, we would yield to you. And Lord, that we would be obedient people. Lord, we know that to obey is better than sacrifice. And Lord, that that's what you desire from our hearts is to be obedient people. God, we're accountable to your word. And so help us, Lord, to uh, respond to it uh, responsibly. And uh, Lord, we pray it would bring about change in our lives. Uh, God, it will, uh, it will help us to grow and strengthen our relationship with you. It'll, it'll become the foundation we build our homes and marriages and, and parent our children on and that we live our lives by. And God, we know these are the things, Lord, that, that we need, our church needs, our community needs. And so, Lord, we pray you do your work in our life. We'll thank you for what you will do. And uh, we ask all these things tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. In that 13th verse, we find that phrase, a new covenant. And the word covenant is a word you find often in the Bible. You find it in the Old Testament. You find it in the New Testament. And that word covenant has a synonym that means pretty much the same thing, and it's the New Testament word, testament. The word covenant and testament are the same word. They have the same idea behind them. Now, we're probably more familiar with a testament, uh, a testament, uh, the last will and testament. We all have heard that phrase. When we consider a testament that someone is leaving, we know that it's the idea of the dispersal of an estate or the dispersal of an inheritance. The way it's dispersed is chosen by the person who possesses it. They're the ones who chooses. And it is dispersed according to their wishes. It's a legally binding agreement. So when we're considering in the Bible a covenant or a testament, this is the idea. Now, we read more about this covenant that's spoken about here in our text. Uh, in the book of Hebrews. If you want to hold your place in chapter 8 and go over to chapter 13, you're going to find that, uh, that uh, we find some things uh, again about this new covenant, this New Testament. Hebrews 13 and beginning there in the 20th verse, the Bible says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do His will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in His sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, if you want to mark a word there, mark that word everlasting. That's a great word. That word everlasting means exactly what it means. It means everlasting, eternal, forever, unending, everlasting. So this new covenant that our Bible speaks about is an everlasting one. It's an eternal one. Uh, we see that it's an everlasting covenant. In Luke 22, you can write this scripture down, Luke 22 and verse number 20. The Lord Jesus is in the upper room. He's with the disciples. It's the night before He will be crucified. He has already observed the Passover feast. Until He yielded the ghost on the cross, He kept the law in every respect. He crossed every T and dotted every I of the law of God. He's the only one that could ever do it. And he observed the Passover feast with the disciples in the upper room. When the Passover feast was over, the Lord Jesus revealed that one among the disciples who was numbered among them, but not one of them, was going to sell him out, betray him. And Judas uh, left and uh, went to sell the Lord Jesus. And we know that after he was gone, that the Lord Jesus did something he had never done before, he, he taught them that I'm about to do something that you're going to do as a local church till I come again. And you're going to do it 
to remember what I'm about to do for you and remember I'm coming again. He, he instituted the Lord's Supper. And we know that, that, that He did those things. And in Luke 22, verse 20, He said, Likewise also the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in My blood. The New Testament, which is shed for you. The New Testament. We find this new covenant is an everlasting one. We find this new covenant, this new testament is sealed with blood. It is a blood covenant. It is a blood covenant. The new covenant is a declaration of an agreement. It's set forth by the Lord Jesus Christ here. It's a statement of the distribution of what is His alone to give. It is His alone to give forgiveness of sin. He's the only one who can do that. This new covenant, it, it, it includes the, uh, the, the bestowing of eternal life. And He's the only one that can do that. And this is all concerned in this new covenant, this New Testament that we're reading about in our Bibles. God had made another covenant. He had made another one. He had made a first one. You go all the way back in your Bible to Genesis. Genesis chapter number 1. And you find God made a covenant with the very first man. He said in Genesis 1.26, And God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over uh, the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And so God created man in His own image. In the image of God created He Him, male and female created He them. And God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, over every living thing. And you know what God did? God said, there's only one condition. I've got one rule. Just don't break that one law. This one law. And, and we know that man did. We know that he did. God made a covenant with man and man broke the covenant. He sinned. Sin entered in. And now we know all men are born separated from God by their sin. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now what we're reading about when we read about this in Genesis 3 is God speaking here for the first time of this new covenant that he's going to make in the future. And he speaks here of, uh, of, the, uh, of the mention of and of the promise of a Savior and a Redeemer for men that will come and, and of what He will do. We find it all the way back in the book of Genesis. Genesis 3.15 is a promise of God that I'm going to send a Redeemer. I'm going to send a Savior. And He's not going to be uh, of the seed of woman. He's going, he's going to be mine. He's going to be my son. His blood will be my blood. And He's going to come into the world and He's going to crush the, 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 uh, the sin that has entered in. And He's going to crush Satan, death, hell, and the grave. I'm going to make a new covenant with men. And He speaks about it all the way back here in Genesis. In our text there in Hebrews chapter 8, God wants man to know Him. He wants man to know Him. This is what God has always wanted. He, he wants man to know Him, and He wants man to know of this new covenant and this, this new testament that He's made with man. This is, this is what God desires for all men, that they might know Him and be His so that God might be their God. That, that's what's been in the heart of God since before He created man. He desired man that he might be God to man. That he might provide for man and care for man and be God to them. This is what he desired. It pleases God to be God to men. And with that, God takes absolute, complete responsibility for the needs of every man. This is what he desires. The Bible said that men know God 
through Jesus Christ. In fact, they cannot really know God unless they know the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, no man comes to the Father but by me. He said to the disciples, you want to see God? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Bible said, I'm the express image, the express image of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's by seeing the Lord, knowing Him, that we see and know God. And God wants men to know Him. The old covenant, the old covenant that God made failed. And it failed because man failed. God made that covenant with man. God said, if you will, I will. If you don't, if you don't, then I won't. This is what God said. And that covenant failed because man failed. He sinned. But this new covenant we read about in Hebrews chapter 8 that God spoke about all the way back in Genesis chapter 3, this new covenant, this New Testament states uh, here that this new covenant, this new agreement is between God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son. See, this new covenant is not between God and man now. It's between God and the Son. God the Father and God the Son. And with God the Father, we have a a God who cannot lie. A God who's as faithful and good as His Word. He, he's the everlasting Holy One. And we have His Son who is the same as He is. We have two people that cannot fail, that cannot lie, that cannot break their Word, who will never, never not fulfill their promise. That's who this new covenant is between. Now, the covenant, this New Testament states that, that all that come to God through Jesus Christ God will give eternally to His Son. God the Father said, Son, if, if you'll go, and you'll go to the cross, and you'll become the sin of all men, and you'll pay that sin debt, Son, that's going to satisfy me for the sin debt of all men, all who have ever lived, and all who ever will live until the end. It'll satisfy, it'll pay their sin debt. And Son, I promise you, I make an agreement with you, that because you shed your blood, gave your life, that every man, woman, boy, and girl who turns to me by faith in your finished work, I will save them, seal them, secure them, and deliver them up to you as an eternal gift because of who and what you've done. I don't know about you, but that is exciting to me to know that my salvation does not rest in me, it rests in the Father and the Son. And I'm the beneficiary of it. It doesn't have anything to do with me. It has everything to do with what the Father and the Son agreed upon. That's the new covenant. That's the new testament that we have. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Pastor, that's a great verse. That's a great verse. But really, that's just the New Testament. It's just the New Covenant. It's what it is. The Father gave, we believe, and the Father gives us back to the Son, and we become His glory, His purchased glory forever and forever. When a man receives the gift of Jesus Christ by grace through faith, God makes a gift of that believing soul to his son forever. Hebrews chapter 7, in just a few verses before our text, you can see it probably on the same page you're on. Hebrews 7 verse 23, the Bible said, And they truly were many priests, because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, speaking about the Lord Jesus, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Save to the uttermost. Save to the uttermost. That's the New Testament. That's the New Covenant. It's one sealed with blood, written by the blood of Jesus Christ, shed for you and me. It was the work of the Son on the cross. It was the word of the Father and the gift of those who believe back to the Son by the Father, saving them to the uttermost. In Hebrews 8, verse 1, that text I read to you, notice it again. It says, Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. This is the sum. 
Now, I, I halfway paid attention in school, didn't you? Halfway. And I did know, at least, that if you add two and two together, you get the sum, right? The, the total. <laughs> what it all adds up to. That's, that's what the sum is. And the Bible said, now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. This is the sum. You know, when the name of Jesus Christ is mentioned, men think of him in many different ways. You, you can ask many different people. People that maybe don't know the Lord Jesus Christ personally. Maybe people who are religious. Maybe people from all different places and all different walks of life. But when you mention his name, some men think of him in so many different ways. Some people will say, when you mention the name of Jesus, they'll talk about the babe born in a manger in Bethlehem. That's how they think about him. Some, some will say, well, yes, he was a great teacher. He was a great teacher. They'll think about all the parables that he taught, all the lessons and stories that you read in the Gospels. Some people will think of the miracles that he performed. What a great miracle worker. Boy, we could really use a miracle today, they may say. And unfortunately, when some people think about the Lord Jesus, to him he's simply a figure sculpted and still hanging on a cross. I'm thankful today that he's not on that cross, is he? That's the misrepresentation of the Lord today, isn't it? That he might be still hanging on that cross because he's a living Savior today, isn't he? But men think about him in all different kinds of ways. But to God, he is the sum of everything. He is the sum of it all. He, he is what it all is all about. He's the Savior, the only one. He's the Redeemer, the only one who could pay the price. He's, he's God's great high priest who, who took the blood. I believe every, blood, uh, every bit of blood uh, that, that, he, uh, that he shed on the cross from the thorns and from the, uh, from the lashings and from the, uh, the nails and from the spike. I, I don't know how, but I believe somehow he took every drop of it and as they took that body from the uh, cross and as they buried it in the grave, I believe he was there before the Father in heaven at the throne presenting his blood as the great high priest. He was the sacrifice and he was also the high priest who presented that blood on the eternal altar of God, who is the Lord. He's the sum of it all. He's the sum. He's my Savior. When I, I'm asked about salvation, what do I say? Well, it's just Jesus. He's the one. It's all Him. If you ask, how can you, how can you uh, have victory over the world? How can you overcome the flesh? How can you uh, walk and, and, and know uh, that, uh, that your life is making a difference. It's just all the Lord, isn't it? He's the sum of it all. There isn't anything without Him that is anything. He's the sum. He's God's. He's the one who's seated right now by the throne of God who alone is the minister of this New Testament. He's the one who disperses His possessions of forgiveness and eternal life. He's the one that brings salvation to the souls of men. I think that's interesting, verse number 3 of Hebrews chapter 8. And, you know, we read right over it with really, really, we don't really catch what it's saying. It says, verse 3, for every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Talking about the Old Testament, those men, those Levites, those priests, it was expected of them to offer up gifts and sacrifices under the law that God had set forth. They would offer up gifts. The people would bring the gift for the sacrifice, the feast, the offering. They would present them. They had the sacrifices. If they had sinned or if there was some uh, issue, they would bring their offering. They would bring their sacrifice. The priest would offer it up. Every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. But notice this little phrase. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man, what man? The Lord Jesus. That this man have something also to offer. <laughs> Isn't that an interesting phrase? 
that he might also have something to offer. Listen, he's the only one that has anything to offer. And what he offers is everything. It's forgiveness of our sin. It's, it's a real relationship with God. It's eternal life. It's life that has purpose. It's a Savior who's a living Savior. A high priest seated by the throne of God. A mediator making mediation for us day and night. The one who hears our prayers. The one who has all power. The one who is able to strengthen us and sustain us and help us to persevere and move forward and for our lives to make a difference. And, and that He makes it such that even you and I as feeble and frail and still riddled with a body and life that has a sin nature even we can be used of God so that it matters that we live and we can impact eternity heaven can be different because he is everything and because of what he has to offer to you and to me he's our everything he is the sum he's the sum of it all Hebrews 8 verse 11 they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. You know, God has given to every believer his Holy Spirit. And he lives in us. He indwells us. He will teach us. The Holy Spirit will teach us. The Holy Spirit will lead us. He will guide us. It's by the Spirit of God within us that we have direct access to God. We can come directly to Him. Hebrews 4, and you probably are familiar with these verses. They're such wonderful verses. Hebrews 4, begin the 14th verse. Seeing then, that's for that statement. That statement sounds familiar, doesn't it? From this morning's message. Seeing then. Seeing then. We understand that here's something we ought to see. And when we know what it is showing us, that it'll change our life. It'll change our life. Seeing then, seeing then, that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. What a great passage. Seeing then. Here's some things we ought to know. May the Lord help us to know that we need to hold fast our profession of faith in the Lord no matter how hard it gets, no matter how tough it is, no matter how impossible it seems, no matter how overwhelming we get, no matter how far down we fall, never give up your profession of faith in the Lord. Because He is, He is our great high priest. And He knows. And He understands. And He feels. And He has compassion. And He is aware. And He sees. And the Bible said that his compassion is so great that, that he was moved with compassion. And it moves our Savior to step in and take action. He's not going to forsake us. He's not going to leave us alone. He died for us on the cross. He's not going to set us on our own and, and never look our way ever again. Our Sunday, our Building with the Bible, our lesson this morning, we're looking at at, at in pursuit of God's heart. That's our thought. We want to live life so that it might be said of us, as God said of David here in the book of Hebrews, he was a man after my own heart. God said he, he, he wanted to win me. You can't win the heart of God. God loves you. He's loved you from before the world was. He loves you with an everlasting love. But we ought to want to live that way anyway, haven't we? And so that's what we've been looking at. We're looking at Psalm 40. Psalm 40. And the psalmist writes about the sum of God's thoughts toward him. That God is continually thinking about him. I ask our group this morning, has it, does it ever occur to you through the course of a day that God is thinking about you right at that very moment? 
no matter how it seems like, no one knows and no one cares, God's thinking about you. His thoughts are so numerous, the psalmist said, that he wouldn't be able to count them up. At any given time in our lives, no matter how difficult it is, there are so many things that God has done for us and blessed us with that we could never count them all. We could never count them all. And God who loves us that much, he's, he's, going to, he's going to know and hear, and in his time, he will step in if we'll wait upon the Lord. Wait upon him. Seeing these things, knowing these things, that we have a high priest who's touched with the feeling of our infirmities, who was tempted every way, the same way that we are, and yet he never sinned. In him is victory and the source of to overcome our enemies. Seeing then, seeing then, let us therefore come boldly. Let us come boldly. I believe this year that one of the keys to rising up and building our lives as individuals, our relationship with the Lord, seeing it strengthen, seeing it grow, being nearer to the Lord than we ever have before is found right here. That we need to remember that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. That that's where we'll find help. You know, so many times we look every other place, don't we? And God's our last ditch effort. You know, uh, uh, the Catholics have that phrase, the Hail Mary, you know. We, we, we use that in the football games, don't we? When there's nothing left to do and time's run out, let's throw the Hail Mary, you know. That's pretty funny, isn't it? But you know what? What's not so funny is sometimes even we that know the Lord act that way, don't we? That's the last ditch effort. Well, I guess I probably ought to pray about this. I haven't been able to do anything else about it. Let's, let's, let's pray. Let's come boldly to the throne. Seeing then that these things are true, then let us come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. I don't believe there's probably anything that we that are believers have shortchanged ourselves in any more than in this matter right here of coming into the presence of God of knowing that he is there and that there is grace and mercy and help for what we need there's no greater gift we know less about or maybe utilize as poorly as we do as staying in the presence of the Lord the day the Lord Jesus gave his life on the cross in the temple. The scriptures briefly mention it, but the Bible said that in the temple, in Jerusalem, not far from where the Lord Jesus was crucified, when he said, it is finished, and when he yielded up his spirit, offered up his life to pay our sin debt, the Bible said something happened over there. I believe even though maybe they weren't supposed to go in there, somebody had to go in there and see what happened because there was a noise inside the holy place. And those priests looked inside and, well, it, it wasn't the table of showbread, it's still there, and it wasn't the golden candlestick, it's still over here, and it, didn't, it wasn't the altar of incense, but look at what has happened. You better go get Judah, and you better go get Levi, and you better get those other guys in here because we got a problem. The veil of the temple that separated men from God had ripped in two and it had been spread apart so that now symbolically, symbolically, there was no barrier between man and God. Nothing stood in the way and so that every man had direct access to God through the one who had given himself through the veil, the Bible says, that is his flesh on the cross. And the Bible said that veil was torn from the top to the bottom. From the top to the bottom. That means something, doesn't it? That means God did that. That means that God's heart is that men know him. That they have access to him. That they can come to him 